What's going on guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. In this video, we're gonna be covering something called string interpolation. And basically what it is, is it allows us to inject values into a string. And I know that might sound really intimidating and really confusing, but we're gonna see what exactly that means here in just a second. So let's go ahead and hop into a brief introduction of what this is, and then we're gonna hop into Xcode to do some examples. So string interpolation, what is it? Well, as we said before, it's something that allows us to inject values into a string. So what the heck does that mean? Why do I care? How am I gonna use it? Let's go ahead and figure it out now. So looking at this example, let's say we have a variable for the user's age. In my case, it's 31. And then we have an age string that tells them how old they are. So this says you are backslash parenthesis age parenthesis years old, right? So this is just the notation that we need to use to inject this value into the string. That's what I mean by inject. We are taking this value and placing it inside of the string so that ultimately the string gives us back the value of that variable right here. You are 31 years old. So if I changed age to 35, it would say you are 35 years old, so on and so forth. So that's the purpose of string interpolation, guys. And we're going to see how useful this is here in just a second once we hop into the code, which we're going to do right now. So let's go ahead and get Xcode opened up. So we're gonna start off by creating a new playground. So right click on bootcamp and hit new file. And we are going to search for a blank playground file, hit next, and we're gonna call this string interpolation. So once again, guys, let's copy and paste our notes. String interpolation allows us to inject values into a string. So let's go ahead and produce an example of that, right? So the one we had in the presentation was var age equals 31 and var age string equals parentheses you are and then do a backslash open close parentheses and say age years old. And let's go ahead and just print out that age string. And as you might expect, it just gives us back, you are 31 years old. So why do we have to do it this way? Well, let's imagine that I removed these, like this sort of wrapper, right? This backslash in parentheses. What do you guys think is gonna happen if I do that? Well, it's actually just gonna say you are age years old, right? So it's not recognizing that we're trying to treat this as a variable. It's just recognizing this as a couple of letters and it spells age. So what we need to do to actually inject this value is bring back that notation, right? So I say backslash parentheses age years old. And this allows me to take some sort of number type and inject it into my string. And you guys might be saying, okay, well, why don't you just go here and say you are 31 years old? Well, I'm sure you can imagine the reason for this is if we ever modify the value of this age, it will not be reflected in this age string because we've simply placed this constant like hard-coded value of 31 in there. So anytime we modify this property, it won't reflect that in the age string if we do it like this. So let's go ahead and see if we can produce that example of like having to compute this property. Right, so let's just create a couple new uh, variables. So we can say let birth year, and for me it's 1991, and then let current year equal 2023. And then we could say var age equals current year minus birth year. Right, so imagine if we didn't know the user's age directly, we had to figure it out based on this. And this is obviously going to say I'm 32, guys. I am turning 32 this year, but I'm not 32 yet. I'm not that old. But you guys get the point, right? So basically now, how would I know how old the user is? I wouldn't just be able to type this value in there. I would have to inject that value, right, of age. And then it would ultimately print my age string and say, hey, you're 32 years old. So this is what happens when we have to perform some sort of calculation to produce a value right? and ultimately display some sort of dynamic value, 
Right. And what I mean by dynamic is like we're displaying the age value, but that is computed based off of two other uh, properties. So if we really wanted to make this like correct or good code, we would make the current year property a variable because the current year can obviously change as time goes on. And then if I were to go below this guy and say like current year plus equals one and use that assignment operator again, so it would make this 2023 plus one, which equals 2024, then my age would recompute to become, you know, current year is 2024 minus birth year. So I would then be one year older. So that's what I mean by dynamic values there, guys. So I could say like plus equals 10 to see how old I would be in 10 years, which I don't even want to think about. I'd be 42 years old in 10 years. God, that sounds so scary. I don't want to go there. Please just kill me now. But anyway, um, let's go ahead and keep going with some more examples, guys, before uh, we end this video. So this doesn't necessarily have to be numbers, right? This could be any sort of variable that we want to inject into a string. So let's imagine I had a name property uh, or we could bring this first name guy back, Stefan, and then bring this greeting variable back as well. I could say var greeting equals hello. And then I could inject that value with string interpolation and say first name. And then I could print out my greeting. And I'm just going to delete this line of code because I don't want to constantly be reminded that I'm going to be 42 in 10 years. So, all right, guys, it says, hello, Stefan, right? So whatever I change this to, change this to John. And it would say, hello, John. So this allows me to inject some sort of value into a string. Right? So really quickly, let's take a look at what a real life example would look like in this case in a mobile application. So I have an app up here that I'm actually currently building for a client. And it's like a contract management app for the construction projects that they currently have ongoing. But what we're looking at is the top up here, right? It says, hi, Stefan, welcome back. So let's imagine that I can log in as a different user. Like I have multiple businesses that in, are that have multiple contracts. So every time I log in, I want this to be some sort of dynamic value, right? Like I don't always just want it to say, hi, Stefan. I want it to say, hi, whatever user I'm logged in as. Hi, Stefan. Hi, John. Hi, business one. Hi, business two. Whatever that may be. You could apply the same concept to your Instagram accounts, right? If you have multiple Instagram accounts, you could say like, hey, username one, and then you could log out and log in as your second account, and it would say, hey, username two, right? So this is the concept of displaying dynamic data within your application, and string interpolation is a big part of that, guys, because it allows us to inject values into a string. So the reason I'm teaching you guys this stuff, like, because I want to keep coming back to that, right? Like, why am I teaching you what I'm teaching you? What's the purpose of it? Why do I need to know this stuff? And ultimately, what you're trying to do is build mobile applications or build software, right? And at a really simple level, all that is is displaying information to a user, right? It might involve performing some sort of calculation to display information to a user. Like if you had some sort of finance app, you might want to display the user's portfolio value or stocks. You could display their total profit loss or Instagram displays a list of posts, right? Like you're ultimately just displaying information to a user and you want the ability to display dynamic data to them, right? You wanna be able to perform some sort of calculation or process that will ultimately result in you displaying some sort of piece of information to them that they ultimately value, right? So string interpolation, like I said, is a big part of that. And these are really, really simple examples, but these are things that are part of the foundation of building software. So that's why we're learning this stuff, guys. And I want us to do one more example before we end this video, just to really cement our understanding of this concept before we move forward. So um, what I want us to do is imagine we're trying to display the result of a math problem to a user. Like imagine you're building some sort of education app and you want to display math problem results to a user, right? So let's imagine you want to display the result of some number A times some number B equals some number C or X times Y equals Z, right? So let's create a variable 
x and let's set it equal to six and we'll create another variable y equals seven and then let's create a variable called product and it's going to equal x times y okay and let's go ahead and see if we can print out the result of this to the user in plain english hey six times seven equals 42 okay so we could say let product string equal and we're going to create uh, some quotes because we're creating a string here and we want to inject whatever x is times whatever y is and say it equals whatever this product is okay so we're going to say we want to inject the value of x space and this is what the like the plain english part of this is going to be right it's like times or we could even put an x there lowercase x big x doesn't matter y and we have to inject that value as well equals and then we have to inject the product and ultimately we want to print out the product string just like that so let's see what this gives us back six times seven equals 42 right so this gives us back the result of this equation in plain english right and like if i change this to big x it would be six like capital x times seven or i could change it to a star and it would be six star seven equals 42 you guys get the idea right so this is just yet another example of how you might use string interpolation in an application to display data to a user right we're injecting the value of x we're injecting the value of y and it ultimately equals this product guy so let's take a look at what would happen if I modify the values of X and Y. For example, I could change X to nine and I'll notice that if I change X in one place, everything else will update in accordance with that new value, right? So if I change X to nine, my string will ultimately then say nine times seven equals 63. And that's because I'm injecting this value of X here. The product is equal to whatever the value of X is times whatever the value of Y is, which is defined up here. So if I changed Y to 10, then I'm sure you guys could figure out what's going to happen. It's going to say nine times 10 equals 90. So this is just a really good example, guys, to show you how string interpolation is used and also how to use it effectively, right? When you want to display dynamic data to a user in an application, we can simply modify a pro uh, like a property in one place and then have that take effect in multiple other computations, right? Like in this product guy and this product string guy. And we're gonna get tons of practice with that when we start actually building mobile applications, which is gonna come later on in this course. So that is gonna wrap it up for this video on string interpolation, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. In the next one, we are gonna be getting into logic and control flow in programs, which is a, another fundamental concept that we're going to need in order to build high quality mobile apps. So hope you guys are excited for that. We'll see you there. Peace out.